This NBA season has turned out to be a roller coaster ride for us fans. Teams who we thought would be just good have turned out to be pretty damn good, and teams who we thought would be great turned out to be just okay or even downright bad. Just like last season, there isn't a clear finals favorite just yet. There's a handful of teams who could find themselves holding up the trophy at the end of the season, but for some of those teams, in order to increase their chances of doing so, they may need to add a piece to their puzzle. And in this video, that piece is Lowry Markkanen. We're about to take a deep dive into why he could be many teams missing piece, as well as talk about four teams that would be the best fit. Okay, so firstly, how good has Markkanen been this season? Well, he's averaging 23 points and eight rebounds while shooting 48% from the field and 37% from three. So he's been an all-star level center and one of the more versatile players in all of basketball. That versatility is why he's special. He can fit into any system. The first team who should take a chance on him is the Oklahoma City Thunder. In fact, I'm almost 100% sure he's gonna be in a Thunder's jersey very soon. The Utah Jazz have already come out and let it be known that they want at least five picks for him. And as we know, the Thunder have the most attractive collection of picks in NBA history. Giving away five picks literally won't affect their future in any way. On top of the picks, the Jazz would most likely want one of their young players like Usman Dieng or Pope and Josh Giddy. Giddy in a jazz uniform would be one of the most talked about coincidences we would see all year for reasons we won't get into here. But he, along with the picks, would undoubtedly be enough to make this trade possible. So, okay, Markkanen is now in OKC. What does their starting lineup look like? It would be SGA at the one, Lou Dort at the two, J-Dub at the three, Markkanen at the four, and of course, Chet Holmgren at the five. I don't know about you, but that lineup is ridiculous ridiculously good. SGA has been a legit MVP candidate this season. His impact this season on his unit has everyone wanting to see what he does in the playoffs. Lou Dort is still a phenomenal defender who Luka Doncic even called the best defender in the NBA a season ago. J-Dub, aka Jalen Williams, has transformed into what many think is a potential star, which I think is 100% true. At 22 years old, he's averaging 18 points, four rebounds, and four assists, while shooting over 40% from three. And not to mention, he's an impactful defensive player as well. He is putting up the numbers alongside a ball dominant SGA and Josh Giddy, which just shows you he is a dream complimentary player. Chet Holmgren's making a strong argument of being the best defensive player of the year this season as a rookie. He has completely taken OKC's defense to new heights. They only really had a mediocre defense last year. Now they're currently one of the best defenses in the NBA alongside teams like the Timberwolves. Yeah, let's just give that man the award already. His impact has been historic. Sliding loud Marketing into this mix gives opposing teams yet another offensive threat to worry about. Josh Giddy is an excellent facilitator and high IQ guard, but he doesn't put fear in defenses when it comes to putting the ball in the hoop, nor is he a great defender. Having Markkinen on the court will open up things even more for SGA. I honestly think Markkinen can be what Kristaps Porzingis has been for the Celtics. The Celtics offense was already electric without him. However, with him on their roster, they look damn near unstoppable. If you focus too much on Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, he's going to drop 25 to 30 points on you or more. And that's exactly what Lowry can do for the Thunder. I mean, he's averaging 23 per game as the number one option and being the main focus point for defenses to focus on right now. Now, just imagine what he could do as the second option or maybe even third, depending on how Jalen Williams continues to progress. Defensively, Markkanen isn't all that bad. He has solid mobility for his size, which was the reason he was able to play small forward for the Cavaliers a few seasons ago, despite being over seven feet tall. With Chet manning the middle, he wouldn't have to do much, but just be in the right place at the right time and use his length to contest at the rim, something I think he does pretty well. But I wanna know what you think about this potential trade in the comments down below. Next up, the Philadelphia 76ers, who've been on a roll this this far, led by the reigning MVP and maybe soon back-to-back -back MVP, Joel Embiid. Embiid has been out of this world. He's averaging over 35 points per game while also grabbing 11 boards and dishing out six assists. Like, how is that even possible? Not to mention he's shooting 35% from three and 89% from the free throw line and 54% from the field. He's not only killing it individually with his skills, but I'm impressed with this statement he said recently. You can't win with the ball sticking and playing ISO basketball. You gotta have movement. Obviously, for that to happen, you gotta have the right players to play that type of system. And the ball's just gotta move. And you can see it's so much fun. It's not just about scoring. Passing the ball, guys getting open shots, the ball is moving, everybody's happy, it's fun. 
Wow, yeah, Embiid said that. It feels like he's finally becoming his best dominant self and realizing that if he wants his first ring, that ball has to move. This hints at why he's averaging over six assists per game. Tyrese Maxey has been a star and Robert Covington and DeAnthony Melton have been monsters on the defensive end. And Tobias Harris has been putting in work on both sides of the floor as well, to his credit. Even with that being said, the 76ers are truly just one player away from being title contenders. And Lowry could be an interesting fit. Now, obviously, the Jazz would most likely want DeAnthony Melton and Paul Reed since they're both under the age of 26 and then a couple of picks. I would do that, though. But it goes without saying, if there is a way to keep DeAnthony Melton, that would be fantastic. But a lineup of Tyrese Maxey, Tobias Harris, Nicholas Batum, Markkanen, and Embiid would still be great. Plus, the 76ers have quality bench players, too. And if you wanted to swap Batum out with Kelly Oubre Jr. or Robert Covington, it would work either way. If this trade were to go down, then the 76ers would have have a big three of Tyrese Maxey, Lowry Markkinen, and Joel Embiid. Now sure, it could be a weird fit at first due to Embiid mostly operating out of the post and mid-range area, but remember, Markkinen is an excellent outside scorer and shooter, so he could coexist on the court with Embiid and would likely get much more open catch and shoot opportunities than ever before. The thing is, even if they don't work too well together, they could just simply limit the time they actually are together. Lowry and Maxey running things could be just as lethal as Embiid and Maxey. Another thing that's underrated about Markkanen's game is how elite of an off-ball mover he is. His ability to cut off the ball would make Embiid's job so much easier as a passer. Lowry isn't just going to sit out on the perimeter and wait for a pass to come to him. If Embiid or Maxi is in trouble, he's going to find open space on either a backdoor or 45 cut and be at the rim for a dunk. Then, for our third pick, the Atlanta Hawks, who are kind of in a weird spot. They aren't a terrible team, but they aren't necessarily a good one either. It's clear that they need to make a plethora of moves in order to be a threat in the playoffs, let alone in the NBA Finals. However, picking up marketing could be a huge step in the right direction. I think DeAndre Hunter and AJ Griffin would be good enough to get them. If not, they could throw in some picks to sweeten the deal. Like I said though, this move alone won't automatically save the Hawks. They would most likely have to move DeJounte Murray and Clint Capella at the deadline for high quality role players in order to complement them. Dorian Finney-Smith, Jeremy Grant, maybe even Pascal Siakam could be amazing pickups if they were to get marketed. in. However, I do admit that this trade is probably the most unattractive one in this video. Then finally, we get to the final team that could trade for them, the Golden State Warriors. And here, things are a little different. I think a package of Moses Moody, Trace Jackson Davis, Gary Payton II, and Dario Saric could be enough to move the needle. Marketing could be the piece that helps turn things around in the Bay. I can only imagine how great he'll fit beside Steph and Clay due to the amount of attention they still demand. And most importantly, once Draymond Green comes back, whenever that is, Markkinen's off-ball movement combined with Green's passing could be a match made in heaven. The fluidity within the offense would be incredible. If Andrew Wiggins is able to at least become an elite defender again, then this team could make some noise in the postseason. Of course, though, Draymond Green would have to stop the antics and stay his ass on the court. If he fails to do this, then this trade won't have the same impact as it should. I think all in all, Lowry Markkinen will be on another roster soon, and depending on the team, we could have a new super team in our league. His skill and versatility will be an elite asset to whichever organization he finds himself in. But which trade scenario do you think he would best fit in? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.